All right, I'm going to go through this idea fairly quickly here, but you have to make sure um, pay close attention and are ready to follow along in class and make sure you can get through how the problem solving works. All right, so imagine you have a wave from a free barrier. So to demonstrate this, you have a, a, a thick spring attached to a thinner spring. So when it hits, some of the energy reflects back. Most of it goes through but it's, it's still in the same direction. It's an upward pulse. The, re the, the reflection is, is upward, so there's no phase change. It's the same, same wave. Amplitude has changed, but the, the phase has, has changed. And then if you have a fixed barrier, here you have a slinky kind of going in upwards, it hits and it reflects down in the opposite direction. So it's, it goes through a 180 degree phase shift. It goes from a peak to a trough. All right, sometimes when it, light, light reflects the same way because it's just a wave as well. Sometimes it goes through that 180 degree or pi phase change. And that only happens when the second material has a bigger index of refraction. So you only have to worry about this phase shift when you're going from one to two and then 2 has a bigger index of refraction. And when it's the other way, there's no phase change. So only when the second, so you have to make sure, you have to check and see if the index of refraction for the second material is larger. So here, uh, thin film interference is something I'll show you a picture here in a, in a moment that you're, you should be familiar with. Light kind of travels through. Some of it is going to reflect off the first surface some of it's going to go through and reflect off the opposite surface of the film, bubble or oil on, a, on a water, something like that. And then you'll have these two rays. They're kind of drawn at angles just to show you what's going on, but it doesn't need to be at an angle. But these two rays, there's going to be some path length difference because, because ray two goes through the film. So in some cases, you're going to have it set up where they, these two can have constructive interference. Sometimes they'll have destructive interference. So what happens, you'll get different lengths along there, and you'll see the different colors of light. And you can actually see, based on that, you know, some, some uh, number of wavelengths of light, what the thickness of that soap film is. Right, some different ideas going along here. Different ways that you use constructive and destructive interference go along there. All right, so inside the material, if you remember, the wavelength of the light is just the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction. And when there's only, so there, there's, there are cases where there's, you know, between those two things, there's either one phase, phase reversal or there's an odd number in this case, which causes constructive and detective interference. What happens? Because they're, they, we've had that one 180 degree or pi phase shift, now 2 times n times t, which is kind of the path length difference along there in terms of wavelength, is equal to n plus 1 half lambda. You do that because there's already a half wavelength shift, so you need to add in extra half wavelength shifts to get shifts to get constructive interference. Then destructive interference, it looks like this. All right, we'll see exactly why that is in class. But then if there are an, an even number, or zero, phase changes, then it's just two kind of normal things that we have. Constructive, it has to be some number of wavelengths. Destructive, it's some number of half wavelengths. All right, we'll look at that in class.